The House Financial Services Committee will be looking at the future of housing finance today. Here now with a preview, Representative Spencer Bacchus, ranking member of the Financial Services Committee. Good morning, Congressman. Good to see you. Good, good to be with you. Look, you, you speak with somebody who starts with the premise that Fannie and Freddie shouldn't even exist. What are you going to possibly accomplish with yet another hearing about what to do with housing finance today? Well, we're going to have to decide whether the taxpayers will be at risk, uh, whether the government will continue to subsidize mortgages, uh, wh whether uh, the past failures uh, uh, have been a lesson or, or a warning, or whether we'll ignore the history of uh, continued government failures to price risk and uh, to uh, for the taxpayers to ultimately be responsible. This uh, every government insurance uh, program has operated at a deficit and has required taxpayer subsidies and taxpayer bailouts. And uh, that's why we want to take the taxpayers off the hook. The supporters of Fannie and Freddie argue that without them, mortgages just won't get done in the United States, that we desperately need them in order to support the level of home ownership in the United States. Do you believe that? Or if they did not exist, do you think the private market would step in and provide mortgages? Well, Becky, uh, right now there is an addiction to government funding, and uh, we have to uh, we have to break that addiction. Now, uh, with any addiction, uh, there is a long uh, withdrawal process, but you have to start. You have to start now, uh, and you can't start with an explicit government guarantee. Now, the industry and the Democrats have really formed an alliance, and that alliance says that the government needs to continue to guarantee these mortgages. So as, uh, as, as Paul Volcker has said, any time you have an explicit government guarantee, you privatize the profits and you socialize the losses, and that's really uh, what we'll end up doing again. Uh, the lenders will make money uh, on successful mortgages. On those that fail, uh, the taxpayers will pick up the losses. And uh, we Republicans say we're not going to do that. Uh, that's not what uh, the, the American people want. They Governor don't Rendell pay has for a question for you. Failure. What you said, Congressman, I think makes a lot of sense. But what's the answer? Do you get rid of Fannie Mae and, and Freddie Mac? I mean, I think that's the pivotal question. Well, uh, Governor, I think it, it's whether there's going to be a government guarantee. Uh, we all know that it's going to be a transition project uh, process, but yes, uh, Governor, we actually want the government to get out of the mortgage business. We want the private market to come back, and as long as the government is subsidizing these mortgages, uh, the private market uh, really uh, is disadvantaged and will not come back. Uh, you know, the government has basically taken over the market, and uh, as you know, uh, government doesn't always do it better than the private market. In fact, I think uh, one thing this country was built on is a free enterprise system and capitalism, and I think a lot of people have lost faith in that. And I, for one, and I think most uh, on our side of the aisle, uh, still believe that uh, the private market and entrepreneurs and competition in the private market, uh, not the government, not the government subsidies and the government running the show is the best approach. Well, what you say again, it has a, a good, strong ring of truth about it, but how do you think the private market did in the last four or five years? Well, Fannie and Freddie were buying a lot of those mortgages. Uh, Fannie, uh, Fannie and but leave that Freddie, aside. I, I understand what you're saying, but how did the private market do on its own? Did they do a pretty well, good job, or didn't they get us into the ditch? Well, some of them did very well, some of them didn't, but uh, the government came in and bailed out AIG and companies that did not. Uh, now, I think you bring up an interesting point, and I think we'd all agree, Republicans and Democrats and independents, that the subprime lending, lending to people uh, with questionable credit, no down payment, and high loan to values rate, uh, rates got us in trouble. But, Governor, that's what Fannie and Freddie are doing today with their Affordable Advantage program. Now, they've teamed with states, uh, and I know Pennsylvania is one of those, to give people, uh, even people that are unemployed, uh, uh, cheaper mortgages uh, and let, letting them count their unemployment benefits as income. And we just think that's a mistake. We think that's a, that uh, history teaches us that the government, when they get involved in these things, people, uh, social policy trumps uh, economics and, and, and uh, sound business practices. Now, I, I, again, a lot of what you say makes sense, but go back to 
the private sector in the mortgage business responsible. Well, I guess you could say the private there. sector has paid back nearly everything, with the exception of AIG. But right. Fannie and Freddie are on a permanent. And, and I agree. Right. We I mean, when, it, when it comes to handling the response, the, the, the private sector actually did far better than the government. Right, but the, but the private sector and and the bundling these mortgages—that's what got us there. And Fannie and, but, and but Freddie it, contributed. It, it, Enabled by Fannie them, and Freddie. You, but if you give the private sector one percent interest rates, and then you give them Fannie and Freddie to to buy all the bundled stuff, that, and you give them a fee to put on top. I mean, any. All I'm saying, Joe, is that there was blame. But you can't around. separate Fannie. Say, well, uh, no, and Fannie and Freddie aside. We how do you say Fannie and Freddie aside? We should have dealt with Fannie and Freddie and yeah. financial responsibility bill. That was a weakness, and I think that weakness lies on the shoulders of the Democratic Party. We should have done something about it too. But gosh, don't just say it's Fannie and Freddie. The private market. It's right. just abysmal. But, but saying, that, saying that the private market is going to have greed and fear, I mean, we know it's, we've seen Tulip Bowl. We, we know that that's, you know, that yeah, if, you, if it's you, unbridled, it's going to. make sure that we don't have that unbridled I don't think fear it would, if without Fannie and Freddie, it, it would have been. Uh, uh, it, Representative Baucus, been able to you want to weigh in on this? And Joe and, and uh, Governor, let me say this. Uh, I think the real question is that whether it's a private lender or it's Fannie or Freddie, uh, when they make a mistake, who ought to pay for it? Uh, and if it's Fannie and Freddie, we, ought, we know the answer to that is the taxpayer. If it's a private lender, it ought to be that company. It ought to be the investor. It ought to be the lender. And uh, instead, we're spreading that loss over uh, taxpayers. And, and, and as the governor knows, uh, Pennsylvanians are having a hard time just paying their own obligations without obligating them uh, to pay for other people's uh, failures. Now, you know, okay. yes, you know, there were a lot of problems and, and people bought homes and sometimes uh, they, uh, they assumed that uh, the, the prices would continue to go up. And we're not blaming those people. We're just simply saying that other taxpayers should not have to pay okay. uh, for that bad deal. Representative Bacchus, good luck with your hearing. Thank you. Thank you. All right.